I'm always thinking very deeply about my work and what goes into it. The viewer may not see that, but it's part of my process. You don't just make a painting, you, <laughs> you consider every aspect. I, I'm always watching and I'm particularly always looking at nature and what it's doing. Clouds, patterns in nature, trees, animals, sky. I'm like an image magpie. I constantly collect images and then bring them back into my art practice. By bringing nature into these urban spaces through my art, it's actually a reflection of us. We are nature and so by seeing nature depicted, it can give a human being a greater sense of where they are in the world, which is a part of nature and have always been. G'day, my name's Jarman and you can call me Dr. Jarman. <laughs> my mum and I often laugh about the fact that you know, she, she'd hoped that maybe I might have become a doctor and I chose a different path, but in the end I got there and now I'm Dr. Jarman anyway. I have a PhD in fine art from the University of Tasmania. I dabbled a little bit in graffiti as a kid, but I got into street art and stenciling around 2003, 2004, mainly as a response to the Iraq war and the war on terror. So it was a political action more than anything. And that was with a collective of mates in Hobart. Well, graffiti in general is, I guess, a political statement. It's, it's more like an attitude than anything. And it's, and it's I guess, it challenges the status quo. So it is an act of defiance and protest in itself. Before the 2010s, there wasn't a lot of street art murals going up. But since that time, the world's like literally covered in them and they've become this kind of you know, highly accessible and, and interesting way to treat blank spaces of cities, the empty spaces, the neglected and the sort of overlooked. And so street art and my own practice hopes to, you know, humanise and bring something organic back into these spaces. I see street art equally as being performance as it is fine art. It's a performative space, it's a public space. You're making work you know, in a live situation with an audience, you know, who are sometimes an unsuspecting audience. They were just on their way to do something else and they've encountered something out of the ordinary, something new and hopefully something wonderful. And, and for them it's you know, often a surprise and I love interacting in that moment. Spray cans are a very cool tool and that you can, because it's in the air, you've got every, every angle in space you can use to work it. After I've done my fills and got all my base colours in, I usually come through with my deeper shadow first and put those in where I think they should go. And then some of the highest highlights. And that way I have a sort of a contrast that I can play between and come back through with the mid-tones. What I love about birds is their great diversity. They are some of the most magnificent creatures on the planet and they come in every size and every shape and every colour and every pattern. And they're loved for that very reason. Diversity is celebrated in the avian world. And I think as humans, we could be more like birds and, and celebrate our diversity more than we sometimes do. So this bird is the 40 spotted partalote, which is one of the rarest birds in Australia, and hence an endangered species, only found in a few places. So my sense of the political has never really changed, and I still very much feel that everything I do is, is a political act, but there is a lot more camouflage going on around that in the same way that, you know, a green bird can sit in a green space and not be spotted. Uh, my work is no longer overtly political, but it still has a political agenda. 
by drawing attention to you know species that might be threatened or overlooked or disregarded by humans. It can hopefully create a bit more awareness around those species that are threatened by our activity, but also just hopefully triggering a response within us that allows us to remember who we are, which is that we're not different to that species that is under threat. You know, we are all part of the same thing that's happening on this planet, which is, is nature and it is the assemblage of life. We're not other, we are it.